Bobby Manning here, Joe Sway Pavone by my side again, and we just watched something horrific in the final seven minutes of this game where the Celtics did not make a basket, scored five points. Blazers go on a 20 to five run and leave the Celtics asking million questions about where they're at and where they're going. Uh, just a catastrophic loss, 109-105 to the Trailblazers who did not have Damian Lillard. Didn't have C.J. McCollum yeah. playing all that well. Uh, and not much else, aside from Yusuf Nerkic, who was pretty good and had the decisive putback. Uh, Jalen Brown also completely misplayed Robert Covington on a left corner three that uh, initially put the uh, Blazers within striking distance there. And then they cleaned it up. Jason Tatum couldn't get a leaning right-wing three-pointer to go, and that's the ball game. He scores 29, does not make a three. He's now mm. missed 20 straight. Yeah. Especially that last one, that would have been nice if, if that one if that one went through, that would have been nice. But yeah. So where do we, where are you going on this one? Like, what's your first thought after just watching that? Can we focus on the positives? I know that's the way we ended the post game show. I don't think so. I felt like the Celtics fans needed to hear that. Okay, let's lead with the positives. I should say, right? right? Jason Tatum being aggressive, attacking the rim. You know, that's where it started. That's where it started, and and I love that. If that can carry over into the next game, you know, you want to see more of that. You want that to become a habit. You don't want the shooting to become a habit, obviously, the offers, but I don't think that's realistic, you know, into thinking that Tatum's going to continue to shoot this way. Sure, he's having a poor shooting season all, all year long, you know, shooting, what, around 30% or sometimes, you know, below? 31%. 31%, right? So right now he's, he's just hovering over that spot. But the Celtics have to – the only thing they can do right now is focus on the positives, okay? They can't keep thinking about the trade deadline. Players can't keep their minds distracted with that. And also – the one thing or one of the few things that we talk about the most is the lack of production from the bench. You got two solid outings from guys like Romeo Langford, guys like Grant Williams. I mean, if you're Ime Udoka and teammates, if you're Ime Udoka in the, in the Celtics team, you have to zero in on those positives. And I think that they have to do their best to stay focused because at the end of the day, it comes down to mental toughness, Bobby. And, you know, this late game execution, these guys falling apart here, six minute drought. I mean, that's mental toughness in my opinion. And you're, it here, is. And you're here at home, you know, you got guys like Nurkic who are not gonna give up until the final buzzer. And that's what happens against guys like that. You know, you were unable to, to, to stop the bleeding when it mattered most. And even when you did pull ahead, you were unable to keep that defensive, you know, intensity you know that the the portland trailblazers when they scored you know six consecutive points or six unanswered points you know, rather i think that's when you start to you start to question the identity of this team like okay you want to be a defensive first team well you have to continue to show that you're able to do that in the fourth quarter mm -hmm. and that's the problem with this team when the offense disappears late their defense goes to hell too and it it did there that right. brown breakdown was just inexplicable and is it the missed layups on the other end that he yeah. had just a brutal shooting night for brown especially inside uh, tatum did he take that last shot because he hadn't hit a three to this point gary asked yeah. a good question there and he may said yeah. no uh, but the plan on that play was to throw it to brown who was wide open or yeah. rob in the lane who was pretty covered there other problem with this team too you get some threes to go great grant hit some threes pritchard hit some threes in the fourth quarter he went on a nice little stretch there it gives you an 11 point lead and then they fall in love with it. Almost yeah. every shot that the Celtics took in the fourth quarter was a three. On that 0 for 7 run that devastated them, I believe five of the shots they took there were threes. And they turned it over twice on nine possessions there. I, I don't know. This team is not a good shooting team. And they, mm -hmm. they can't seem to get away from the three. It's hard to drive when the lane's packed. The Blazers had a million guys in there and were shutting Tatum and Brown out. Ime said that they took the ball out of Tatum's hands effectively. Mm -hmm. They played some zone. So I don't know what you do here. You don't have the shooting. Your mid-range game's no good. Mm -hmm. You can't really get to the basket. Right. Uh, I, it's just baffling. This br offense is broken. That's why you got zero on the positives, Bobby. See, you got me all negative. I started off so positive and then right to the negatives. But, you know, to your point, Bobby, in all seriousness, I mean, this 500 team is, is exactly what they look like, you know? And you, you rewind two years ago. Good defense, was, bad offense. It, you, it, it was the same thing, or at least a year ago it was the same thing. I mean, it's it's – you're not quite the sure. way around last year. Good offense, bad defense, but still 500. You know, <laughs> like that's the thing. And and at the end of the day, you know, mental toughness and, and poor execution. I think that's what the Celtics are lacking right now. And to Emay's point, you know, after the game, seeing these habits, you know, months into the season, things that he was pointing out you know, during training camp or at least the first couple of weeks into the season is disappointing. But at the same time, he's waiting to see them turn the corner. He still believes in that. And you know, Celtics fans are, are starting to lose hope. But I think this is the stretch where we have to sort of see what the identity of this team is. And, of course, with the trade deadline, you know, a few weeks away, 
I think we'll start having those serious conversations within the next couple of weeks as to what's next for this team because there has to be some sort of move in line. And if there isn't, we have to start talking about at least what this team really is missing and what, and, and, and what ways they can improve on you know, to, to finish the season and, of course, and beyond. You know? Feels like selective selling is the way to go for me. I don't see this getting better this year. I think this is becoming a little bit of a lost season. So let's let's see some more Romeo after a good week. If you want to go with the positives there, Grant in a bigger role. Pritchard certainly I thought helped you over stretches again here. Right. Could they use Schroeder late? I guess. I mean, he was so bad defensively early. That's an adjustment Eme could have made. And when you're as bad in the fourth quarter as this team is, I'm okay looking at the coach a little bit. I, they do in this game in and game out. Something's got to fall on the coach there. I think he hit the right buttons here, but he definitely didn't react. And the team didn't react. And they haven't in right. numerous spots. Over yeah. the last month here, this has just been a horrific month against bad competition. There have been numerous collapses. This and the Knicks one being the biggest. Uh, late game missed spots shots and key spots the spurs game comes to mind there and then another game where you fell in love with threes the hornets lost just last game and the clippers one where you shoot nine percent uh, so this team is just entrenched in habits they're turning the ball over a ton nobody seems to know situations the bonus late right. nobody was aware of that and nobody really came together showed some urgency huddled point something out and Marcus Smart, again, missing this one with conditioning. I, I just doesn't feel like this team has a lot of hope internally that they're going to turn this around. It's like what we talked about in the postgame show, Bobby. I mean, that report saying that things are stale, I mean, it's... It looks like it. It's, they're showing already, right? And, and what I mean by that is it's everybody. It's not across the board. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, specifics to, to Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown's relationship or specific to, you know, the Jays trying to figure this out. I mean, yeah, there's some part of that that is, that is true. Well, those are the two guys that most of us or all of us weren't worried about going into the season. And I'm not saying that these two are having a very disappointing seasons, but in terms of them ascending and, and, and reaching another notch, I don't think they, they've done that so far this season. We're going to talk a ton about the deadline, less than three weeks away now. And Joe Sway and I will be in Washington, D.C. Wizards, 3.30 right. on Sunday. Just what this team needs, one of those afternoon games where they're so good. Right. <laughs> Use another L. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> another team fighting for playing positioning. And listen, I think anybody's solution is good as anyone else's when it comes to this team at this point. Put some yeah. in the comments <laughs> below. Let's brainstorm, Celtics fans. Let's brainstorm here. Let's, uh, let's argue like we always do and point the finger at uh, people's uh, takes. <laughs> we'll talk Marcus Smart. We do. Yeah, we'll talk Marcus too. If, if he's coming back for this trip, I think he's a big conversation point. We talked about it on post game, so there'll be a video on coming on that in Washington, D.C. Stay tuned. Celtics All Access is where you get these videos, the Garden yes, Report, sir. in person, in arena edition. Uh, Joe Sway, Sherrod, I believe, as well, I and I will yeah, be. My name is Joe Sway, man. Come on. No, I'm just kidding. I think all <laughs> three like of Joe us. Sway? <laughs> Well, I'm hesitating on Sherrod. I don't know if he's yeah, going to be down there, sure, but, but yeah, we'll it's see. possible. And, you know, you'll at least have us two to keep you clued in. And, listen, I had the great detail that they got booed off the court again. That's why we're here, to see that kind of stuff. Hey, uh, we'll, we'll mix it up. We'll do some fun stuff. Maybe we'll go live or something. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll have fun in the, in the nation's capital. We for have sure. to. And thanks for staying engaged through the slog of a season. Yeah. CLNS Media, Celtic CLNS on Twitter. Uh, check out the podcast versions of the postgame show in this edition as well. And uh, check us out on Instagram, everywhere you can find CLNS Media. We are there. I'm Bobby Manning. We'll see you in Washington.